Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Before I show you what I did, I just wanted to start off with a couple of things that I didn't put in the video, because I didn't even decide to film this until I was already started, and I realized how popular dry pouring is, so I thought, hey, I'll share my experience and hopefully help some other people. A couple of things that I wanted to share that aren't in the video. One, I ended up doing a four inch slab. As you will find out, I'm in the construction industry and just doing anything less than a four inch slab, I just couldn't do because it just didn't make sense to me. So this is a four inch slab all the way through. Um, second thing is I did use wire mesh. I got it from the big box store. You'll see that in the video. Once again, I just wanted to make sure I did everything that I could to make this extra strong and that it would last, um, wouldn't have any potential cracking. Um, so I did that. I'm not saying you have to, but it's what I did. Third thing is uh, watering. I did it different than the others because, as you will see also, I used a different product, which probably led to some of my struggle in this, but also I think because of my background in concrete, I wanted to have a real solid slab, so I used what we you know, normally would use um, for in, our, in our business uh, when we were doing uh, residential slabs, um, smaller slabs for clients. So I did that, but what I ended up doing with the watering is I did water the ground first, so that as I poured it, it would be absorbed. And by the time I got to the end and went to watering it, as you've seen with some of the others, they missed it and they do all these other things and it's because of the product they're using. With the product I use, I was able to water it right away. It was almost hard. I mean, I was actually walking on it at some point after watering it. So I just gave it a real solid watering on a, as you'll see in the video, um, I think it was what they called center. If you have one of those spritzers for your hose, it was the, the setting called center, not shower, but center. Uh, I did come back a couple hours later in the evening and hosed it down again some more, but it didn't seem to make any difference. It was already solid. I could barely push into it a little bit, but it was good to go. So based on what I've watched from other videos to what I've seen in my own video, those were the few things that I didn't incorporate with what you're about to see and wanted to make sure that you, you knew that and hopefully it helps you. Like I said, I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but the point is it's done, it's, it's ready for entertainment, and uh, we're already enjoying it. Okay, now as with anything new, there is a learning curve. And so in that learning curve, um, one of the things I did wrong about this is I didn't screed it properly because uh, I was trying to do it alone. Even though my wonderful wife offered to help me, I was trying to be a, a good husband and not involve her in one of my crazy home projects <laughs> that uh, will end up being beautiful, but she's already so busy. So anyway, I tried to do it myself and did a really bad job doing it. I knew I was gonna be putting a topper uh, over this with, I forgot the actual, I think it's uh, Rapid Set uh, Quick Creek that I just put a topper over it. But anyway, it was really, really bad. Um, just all the undulations. So uh, you can see I've wetted it. Um, I've already ground some of it. Sorry about that, didn't mean to put the hand in there. So what I'm about to do now is grind it some more. Um, I can see as I've wet the cement to keep it from uh, blowing dust up everywhere. And that's what you're supposed to be doing anyway. And then I'm uh, hopefully gonna fix my air and when it's all done, it's gonna turn out to be a beautiful job.
Okay, as you can see, this is uh, the next day. I did uh, self-leveling cement all over everything because I told you I had issues with the screening because I didn't get help, tried to do it myself. So I just need to do some light grinding, as you can see here, just where there was a little bit of splatter. And then um, after that, what I'm gonna do, like I did with the other parts of the slab that connect to this, which I'll show you later, uh, I'm gonna do new, use Rapid Set Nucrete over all of this. No, I'm not being sponsored by Rapid Set. That would be wonderful. But anyway, it's a great product. I've used it before and it's great for resurfacing because you can get it down to, I think it's like an eighth of an inch or even 16th of an inch. I mean, anyway, you can look at the specs there, but what's great is you, you don't need much. So it's great for situations like this where everything is good, but you just need to make it look a little bit better. And the other thing I'm about to do is I'm about to take the forms off. I know a lot of people in other videos you've seen and even I think it's a country Cajun or whatever that couple is that became very viral regarding uh, dry pours did their take their framing off the next day. It's actually been about a month and why did I leave it a month? Because I'm in the construction industry modeling and, and making other people's homes beautiful so I don't have time to work on my own. So I'm about now to uh, take off the framing and and we'll see how it looks. As you can see, it looks like actually everything cured pretty well. Um, it is solid, it is hard. And uh, this is what a dry pour looks like after, like I said, it's been about, here about a month. And removing the form, the only part that actually came up here in the corner is the top layer of the self-leveling cement. Um, and when I use that Rapid Set Nucrete, that'll cover right over that. You can even take a look on this side. You can film down here just so they can see how that worked out. So yeah, I think this is, once again, a dry pour has proven to be a very effective. Now, I wouldn't use this for anything structural. I would definitely, if you're gonna do anything structural to build upon this a home or anything like that, but for a slab, for walking on, for entertaining, um, a slab on grade, this, the dry pour is something new. If you're on your own and don't wanna have the expense of paying other people to do it, definitely seems like a very viable option, but definitely make sure you get help screening because if not, you're gonna be left with a not as nice looking uh, top as what I went through. But uh, as you can see, it is solid, strong. And once we get it all done with the new crete and the stain, you'll see it looks very similar to this. Now this is all dirty, but this is, uh, this section over here is a slab of concrete I poured traditionally, you know, mixing it bag by bag, troweling it and getting everything in there. And then we did put the new crete on top of this. So anyway, when it's all done, it'll look like one solid pour, even though these three sections, this was poured initially years ago. This was poured a year and a half ago, this section. And this was poured just one month ago. So we look forward to showing you when it's completed and thank you for joining us. Okay, everybody, here's the final product. Uh, we went ahead and covered it with the cement all. I'm not the best at it, but what you can see is it does come out good. I knew I was gonna be painting it, so I wasn't worried about a perfect finish. It's not for a client, it's for our own home. But we did have some guests and entertainment um, entertain on Saturday, and then people were amazed. We talked a lot about how this dry pour and how it's becoming so popular. But like I said uh, prior, I would not do this method for anything structural, but for a slab, for entertainment purposes, for like a seating situation like we have here, it will work perfectly. Okay, and one final thing that I can think of is, this is definitely a project you can do by yourself, but the only part is, is don't make the mistake I did, and that's why I had to use the cement all to cover it, is when screeding it, especially of a slab this size, you definitely need two people to help get a good finish on top. Um, if not, you're going to be left in a situation like me where you need to then cover it with cementol or some product like that and to make it come out looking nice with a nice broom finish. So besides that, that would be the only thing I would definitely uh, do different if I had to do this project over again. So thank you all for uh, listening and watching and hope you enjoyed, learned something. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and a like. And now I'm going to be working on the putting green next.